Okay, so basically what we're doing, and as I mentioned before, when you're talking about the lower extremity, you have the arm, and then you have the leg, which is the lower leg, or the anatomy, like you say, is the leg. And then the tibia and the fibula is going to be connected by the interosseous membrane. So you have the tibia and the fibula here, and then again, just like in the forearm, we have this membrane that connects the two bones together. So a lot of the muscles that we're going to talk about today are going to be originating off of the tibia and the fibula and or the membrane that goes in between the two. The ones that are going to be deeper are going to come off of the, the membrane. The ones that are more of the superficial ones are going to be off of the bones themselves. And so then you can see which of the lower leg bones forms the major articulation with the knee. Okay, yeah. The tibia or the fibula? Okay, and then you have the fibula up on the side. And then again, the, tib the tibia is going to form more of the ankle joint as well. So the tibia is the primary weight-bearing bone in the lower leg. And the fibula is, is only partially contributes to the lower leg. You do have the articulation here and here as well. So you have a superior tibial fibular articulation and an inferior. Like I said, most of the weight of the lower leg is, is performed, is held up by the tibia. And then it's the second largest and strongest bone in the body, which would be the femur, would be the largest. Okay. And the markings that we're going to have on it are going to be the median lateral condyles, or actually they're usually called tibial plateaus, which is actually the articular surfaces here. So these would be the condyles here. And then you have this intercondylar eminence, which is these two little tips that stick up. Because we'll talk about the cruciate ligaments, and those are part of the portions of the bone where the cruciate ligaments are going to attach to. And again, we've talked before about the tibial tuberosity. Then you're going to have the anterior crest. And then which malleolus is this going to be? Medial or lateral? Medial. So it's on the big toe side, as opposed to this one, which is going to be lateral. Okay. And then we've talked a few times about this pes rind, which is this area here where there's a combination of muscles that insert onto it, as well as the medial lateral ligament. And then the fibular notch, which is here where this is going to articulate. So then you have the fibula, which is a thinner bone. It's more of a stick-like bone. And then it's going to have expanded ends on either side that's going to articulate with the tibia. Okay. So then we have the foot. And we'll talk more about that uh, next time. But basically you have, just as in the hand, you have, instead of, in the hand we call the carpals, in the foot we call it tarsals. And then the rest are going to be the same. Uh, except each individual carpal is going to be different names as there was in the hand. But then when you get to the toes, and the meta, here we're going to call them metatarsals instead of metacarpals in the hand, and then the phalanges. And it's the same situation. You have two on the big toe and three on the other four toes. And so the foot is going to support the weight of the body and then act as in propulsion or <coughs> And the main part of the weight of the foot is going to be the calcaneus and the talus here. So it would make sense because those are the ones basically right underneath the tibia and the fibula. Okay, so now we'll talk about the muscles that cross the knee. So the main muscle that's going to extend the knee is going to be the quadriceps. Right? We've talked about those muscles before when we talked about the thigh. You have the rectus femoris that crosses both joints, so it flexes the hip and extends at the knee. And then the other ones are going to be knee extensors, the vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, and vastus lateralis that we went over last time. 
And then what are the ones on the back here? The hamstring. Right, so you have two on the medial side, one on the lateral side. So you have the biceps femoris, which we heard about a little more today. And then you have the semitendinosus and semimembranosus. And then there's various other muscles that are going to also do flexion of the knee. I mean, uh, extension of the flex, extension of the sartorius. And then you get some of the uh, adductor muscles like the gracilis. It's going to have other actions at the hip and at the knee. So now we'll talk more specifically about the articulations. So you have the femoral patellar joint, or also called patellofemoral joint. It's basically where the patella articulates with, it primarily articulates with the femur. Okay? And then depending on what state of inflection or extension the knee is in, it's going to articulate with different portions of these femoral condyles. And then you have the tibiofemoral joint, which is the articulation, obviously, between the femur and the tibia. And you can see how the tibia by itself is pretty flat. And then that's where the menisci come in handy to help deepen that joint articular surface. Okay? And then there's the ligaments that are going to um, increase the stability of, those, of the joint. You know, wasn't, did somebody was assigned the, the Q angle of the knee? You can see here that that would be an, an increased patellar or Q angle versus this one here. And there's also other factors that can lead into it too, where you have an internal rotation of the thigh or the knee. So now you have the, the knee joint and the knee capsule is it's a combination of a lot of these different tendons and, and ligaments and things like that. So the tendons have little gaps in them and then that's filled in with uh, other uh, fascia and connective tissue. But it's, it's not complete on the back side. It's, all, it's kind of all wrapped around on the front side, but there are openings in the capsule on the back. And this is not necessarily going to be significant as far as for, for this class, but when you talk more about clinical stuff related to the knee, I will hear about something called a Baker cyst, which is kind of a bulging of the stomach fluid on the back side of the knee. So just keep in mind in the general sense that the back part of the knee capsule is a little more open as opposed to the foot. And then the front part is going to be these structures that we talked about before. You're going to have the uh, patellar ligament, which is a continuation of the quadriceps. And then you're going to have some kind of patellar retinaculum, like we talked before about retinaculum, which are connective tissue things that, that usually occur at, at joints that are going to help hold tendons in. And in this case, it becomes part of the joint capsule. And then there's some of the ligaments that are outside of the capsule and some of the ligaments that are inside of the capsule. So extra capsular it was going to be the two that we talked about here, the lateral collateral and the medial collateral. And then inside of the capsule, but they're not inside of the actual synovial fluid, are going to be the two cruciate ligaments, anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate. Right. And then what the anterior cruciate ligament does is it prevents, if you think about it, the way that it's named, based on what it does in relation to the tibia in relation to the femur. So the anterior cruciate is going to protect, prevent anterior translation of the tibia in relation to the femur. Posterior cruciate is going to prevent posterior movement of the tibia in relation to the femur. Okay. 